Hello guys, my name is Amit Sani and welcome to Study IQ and in this uh, the Hindu newspaper analysis video, uh, these videos are uh, uh, coming in both in, in the English language in the, mo in the morning and in the evening the PIB videos, they are uh, coming both in Hindi and English and uh, important MCQs, important data, facts, articles, all we are discussing and uh, all are crucial for the prelims and means both stages. So please do not miss any of the lesson and PDF you will get on the Telegram channel and on my study IQ, uh, on my Facebook group that I have given on the last page. So 14th of May it is and these are the numbers there you can call and you can ask for these pendrive courses and this is the study iq's website address where chat section is available all these courses are available at 60 percent off and all are important updated and created by expert courses so if you talk about a particular news and a motivation also hamilton lewis hamilton uh, the british driver and uh, formula one racer inspired to victory by brave boy fighting cancer recently he uh, won this uh, spanish grand prix uh, race and he said that i was motivated by a boy he was fighting with cancer uh, and he's still fighting with cancer so you see cancer is a dreaded disease the most dreaded c word in this world today and anybody's feet will start uh, trembling in fear if uh, they will hear about this disease and if something happens to uh, us or uh, one of uh, among us then it's the most scary thing uh, for the life but you see Hamilton was putting efforts and uh, making mistakes again uh, standing and dealing with the problems and again uh, going with the efficiency winning the race all these things they need motivation but you see they all need effort also they all need patience also they all need positivity also but you see when he thought about this boy then what can be bigger than that he is fighting the most dreaded battle of the life and nothing can be bigger than that if you are scared for the life and you know that very soon you may die then what kind of condition would be there leave about the kid uh, just think about an adult person he would be uh, going into depression most of the times most uh, number of people they would go into depression but the boy it looks only for that opportunity that uh, he may live and he is only looking only focused on that positivity and on, and on that uh, uh, opportunity that he may get so that is the way that is the best way you see that this, this reality and this truth of life that is the biggest motivation for any person if you talk about our life if you talk about us then we just uh, uh, should compare our condition with that kid or maybe some other person who is fighting with any kind of disease or any kind of uh, uh, harsh conditions in uh, the life so you just compare how much effort we are to uh, we are uh, putting here we are always focused on the negativities we are always focused on the problems which are uh, uh, there with us we are dealing with problems but some opportunities are, alway, all, are always there and that's why we are much more fortunate but the boy that does not have any opportunity he is just looking for one thing that uh, by any condition he may survive so that is the uh, positivity and that is the thing that uh, we should focus on and always we say be positive be positive this is truly in a sense being positive that you look for the opportunity only and you are focused only on the opportunity not on the problems because problems are there that's that's why we are dealing with it but always look for the opportunity there that anyhow any condition what kind of effort i make what kind of uh, routine i uh, follow there what kind of uh, uh, positivity i would maintain so that i can get that opportunity so this is the way and this is the ultimate level of perseverance this is the condition this is the life's condition but you see uh, this is so huge a thing and if we compare our goal with this thing then our goal is nothing our goal is so small and we are so small uh, a person that we are notable to win even this uh, goal if i talk about myself then i feel so uh, small as a person that i am nothing people are fighting so big battles people are people are fighting consistent battles and they are winning these uh, things so that's why lewis hamilton says that uh, he was the ultimate motivation for him and really it's a true motivation it's a respectable uh, say by uh, the racer and just compare yourself you see any kind of effort uh, you are making there should not be any problem there should not be any problem because some opportunities will always be there will always be there just make a consistent efforts towards those opportunities and you will seize the moment there now uh, the question that i gave to you yesterday all these animals their genomes have been sequenced till now whether we talk about siberian tiger uh, bengal tiger 
or the dog or different species of rat and uh, elephant elephant maximus the indian elephant that is also been sequenced so all would be the answer here recently we heard a news regarding the asiatic lion and that lion's uh, genome has been sequenced recently arsenic cannot be dissolved in water yesterday i told you about this and it is not one of the major pollutants in naki national air quality index it is not uh, there so both are wrong and d is the correct answer here none is the correct answer you can see pm10 pm2.5 PM no2 o3 ozone this is ground ozone that i discussed about that it is uh, made uh, with the reaction of polycyclic hydrocarbons plus plus nox in the presence of sunlight so it is uh, created in the summers on the ground and carbon dioxide is not there it's carbon monoxide that is there and uh, sulfur dioxide ammonia and lead these are the important pollutants eight pollutants under the naki index and you see namp national air monitoring program is being run by cpcb in the center and the sp uh, cbs in the state so that we are focusing on it's a very important goal and india is at the center stage of this world if we talk about the deaths due to air pollution and the uh, polluted cities most of the cities of the world which are polluted they are there in india so that's why it's a very important goal arsenic is not there it's related to it's uh, related to, to the ground uh, water pollution next to climate vulnerability index in this index some important institutions they uh, put their expertise effort, uh, effort there and they brought out this uh, index and they are saying that all the important goals like uh, uh, factors like uh, socio economic factors uh, and uh, population factors uh, uh, these uh, forest factors agricultural issues and even the livelihood livelihood issues they all will be counting under the climate vulnerability index they all are related to the vulnerability so uh one two and three all would be the answer here d would be the answer here you can see iit guwahati uh, and uh, iis bangalore department of science and technology swiss development uh, corporation and uh, the indian himalayan climate adaptation program ihcap all uh, made this effort and they brought out this important index and they rated the states also assam as a state is the most vulnerable state and many conditions are really diminishing uh, you see the soil erosion is too much because of the barmputra river the mighty river and it's a plain area uh, lesser percentage of the, of the forest area and you see the adjacent uh, states they are far better mizoram is having the highest percentage percentage of the uh, forest uh, in their geographical area and uh, manipur is also very good arunachal pradesh is also about 90% and uh, all these factors are also important but you see low female literacy rate in arunachal pradesh they brought this uh, state down in the list and sikkim is the least vulnerable uh, state in this index so sikkim and assam they are very close to each other but one is the least vulnerable and one is one is the most vulnerable so it's about the climate very uh, vulnerability index livelihood issue access to information even information also infrastructure for development production of agriculture sensitivity health status demographic issues economic factors and all these uh, factors are counted under this evaluation to make this index next you can read the issue here these are the words that i found today and you can use them into sentences now this picture is from the mula river near pune city and you see the green layer is of the water hyacinth water hyacinth is the invasive species what are the invasive species it came from outside india and it uh, stayed there for a reason that its uh, existential capabilities they are too much and it can survive in very harsh conditions if some adverse conditions would be there then all these plants all these uh, uh, species they would be devastated but some species like these invasive species like water hyacinth they would remain because they can survive in very harsh conditions so that's the property because of that it is taking over uh, all the biodiversity factors and it is uh, just kicking out the local uh, vegetation there and uh, it is being dominant here and mainly it's a water hyacinth because it is on the aquatic bodies so it is doing a lot of pollution a lot of uh, a bod is being raised because of the many uh, bacteria and all they are there in the water and uh, they will be dissolving all this organic matter and uh, it is absorbing a lot of light you see if a surface is reflective then less light absorption would be there so less temperature would rise and here it creates the green layer the dark layer so it absorbs a lot of light so it is uh, very much supportive of the high evaporation of the water also so it is losing a lot of water also because of this water hyacinth so that's the problem with the uh, this particular species and it's a invasive species you can see 
China hits back imposes tariff hike on US goods worth 60 billion dollar you see in a retaliatory move China is also doing the same thing to uh, America where America was uh, 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 thumping its chest two days back Trump was tweeting about it that uh, I am very happy collecting these uh, taxes from um, the Chinese people and uh, these tariffs are making me very very happy because uh, China is not uh, uh, going ac according to the uh, legitimate needs and all so there are allegations counter allegations all over and both these countries they both are not going in an ethical manner because you see these are the biggest nations and they can do a lot of things which can be a path breaking which can be trendsetter for all other countries and they can learn a lot about uh, 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 their ways but these countries are setting very very uh, a wrong precedents very wrong examples they are setting and they are giving nothing good to the society and to the world society why because they are fighting with each other and the world needs cooperation and that would start from these biggest countries but they are involved in these tariff wars and they are thumping their chest this is all a negative exercise this should not be there it is distorting the world market it is distorting the world trade world economies and everything as a negative consequence we are looking in this world today but this world is going in this direction that people are very much appreciating these kind of leaders who are just thumping their chest always and their conduct is nowhere near to the ethical ones they are doing all unethical practices but uh, they are showing that they have uh, bigger capabilities they are uh, stronger than the other and their focus is only on their rivals they are not looking at these poor people they are not their focus is nowhere there on the vulnerable sections and they are all thinking about the rival how we can defeat the other and how we can win the race there so it is about the very negative race so it is all uh, unethical practice that they are involved in so a mains question and a big essay can be written on this topic and uh, certainly a question would be there in the mains examination because this process is really really wrong here because these are capable countries they can bring a lot of cooperation in this world and they can set great examples there but they are using their cap capacities into defeating each other and a conflict of interest is all we see and everyone would be become negative about uh, knowing all these things so this is not good so china's adjustment on additional tariffs is a response to usa unilateralism and protectionism so we know china we know america we know trump we know xi jinping what kind of personalities are these and they are uh, doing uh, those things which they are known for and uh, this is all about this uh, a few days back america stated that we will raise these duties from 10 percent to 20 percent 25 percent and now china is doing the same so both are doing these exercises cpi is uh, on a rise 2.92 uh, percent is the new height and you see these uh, prices of fuel they are rising uh, on the international level but because of the elections we are not raising them and uh, we are still having uh, lesser values for per liter petrol and diesel but now there would be a steep rise after the election that is predicted and for sure these are going to rise because it is about the elections and making the image in the elections and so that's why they are not raising these uh, uh, prices but international prices are rising and that's why the fuel uh, prices uh, will rise and these commodities will also become very very expensive in a near future because you see there is a direct impact of that and because of the fuel and food prices headline inflation is rising and that's why we are looking at the six month high inflation rates here cso releases these uh, cpi or inflation datas and uh, it is coming under the ministry of statistics and program implementation again ethical issue uh, we are uh, fighting many battles there on the international platform in the wto we uh, put our claims on the WTO appellate tribunal we said that uh, uh, WTO has been very very biased towards these uh, against the against these uh, developing countries and uh, in the favor of these developed countries because they have bigger stakes and again this issue of uh, capacities and the Hindi word so-called Okat as we say that Okat is more with America like country they have bigger funds they have bigger stakes so th things are much more in favor with these countries and here countries like India they are struggling because they know about the rights they know about the equality aspect and uh, they can understand the wrong conduct of these countries and how they are influencing these institutions and that's why we are finding alternative mechanisms alternative institutions uh, today so ADB AIB they are becoming much more important and uh, we need an alternative for the WTO also because it has been 
always uh, in fear of these uh, countries and about the dispute resolution mechanism there also we had complained a lot of times that always we are losing there because these countries they have bigger stakes and their uh, interests are always at the priority of the wto and our interest which are needing much more focus we, because we are a developing country we are not getting that uh, a share of our right so this is the issue of discrimination and we need inclusiveness and non-discrimination and we need to build trust there and we need to address these inequalities because glaring asymmetries are there but uh, wto is not uh, heeding to this issue this information uh, was uh, given by anu padwa the secretary of ministry of commerce in an interview so that's again an issue of ethical conduct on the world uh, platform this is political one we will not discuss this is a very important one for the gs paper 2 it is regarding the rafael issue and the pricing issue and the cag report these two are not important for us it's regarding politics it's regarding cricket and the ipl and uh, the finals was uh, very interesting this issue is regarding the surveillance issue and the perfect dilemma between the surveillance and the privacy issue you see if the uh, the security conditions they are declining day by day and we are uh, uh, facing these issues where more and more terrorist attacks are happening and unprecedented and sudden attacks are happening so we need to uh, put these uh, cities uh, districts uh, streets on surveillance otherwise it is not possible for us to tackle all these situations and we need to barge into uh, into ch uh, chattings and all these uh, accounts also so that we can know about the radicalization moves we can know about the plans of the ter these uh, terrorists and all so that's a necessity but this is again a bad thing we know about the governments we know about the authorities that they are not 100 percent honest and they are not uh, their conduct is not ethical always so wherever even for a single time these data leaks would be there if there would be misuse of the authority then we would not be saved we have uh, very secretive informations we have financial informations and we have uh, uh, many secretive issues we do not want to reveal them to the public or maybe to, uh, to the authorities or maybe these companies but you see if these data leaks are happening as we have seen many many examples then these things are really uh, uh, bringing a lot of distortion and these are uh, devastating for the uh, public freedom here so it is the issue of freedom at one side it is the issue of security at one side so we need more and more techni uh, technological capabilities here but you see it's a perfect dilemma again there is no solution till now because uh, both things are legitimate singapore recently brought this uh, anti fake news law and here they can uh, allow authorities to barge into private chats and all so that they can know about these uh, wrong informations and all so if the governments they misuse this if some campaign is going on against the government if they are going to reveal some uh, wrong deeds of the government then government will say that it's a national security issue and we will uh, block these uh, informations and all so this is the misuse here so this can be happen uh, can be happen and in china also there is a huge allegation that china is uh, creating a surveillance state and it is using artificial intelligence issues and all these uh, uh, the uh, new technologies to barge into people's freedom and their interactions so this is not correct ethically again but it's a surveillance issue so we need to uh, be with the government because they are here to protect us but how much they are protecting us that is also a matter of debate so that's the issue uh, given here we're living in a panopticon that's the right to say here again a very important ethical issue today's newspaper is totally about the ethics and ethics and ethics private public and political morality it is uh, based on the ashoka's uh, uh, messages our learnings from our basic doctrines our philosophies and all and how we are missing the value system and we are uh, more focusing on the symbolization and we our intellectual crisis has taken us to a particular phase where where we are not able to recognize the people who are really uh, responsible for the public morality issues and uh, the governance issues or uh, we are just believing them just because their private life having some seclusion having some uh, sacrifices so there is no guarantee that any person is good in private life would be great in public life so it is uh, about that and we will briefly discuss this issue but it's an extremely important issue for the asset topic for the mains questioning in the gs paper 4 case studies gs paper 1 and 2 both all things are relevant here so we will discuss that private public and political morality when people choose a political life they must follow an ethic distinct from the private morality most correct statements and most relevant statement today how you see even ashoka thousands of years back he 
told about these uh, interpersonal morality issues and the public morality issues and the political morality issues he said that each of us has a special obligation to our children spouse parents teachers relatives this is our interpersonal morality and the morality issue and the ethical conduct starts from here if we do not have control here then our public life would not be good but there is no guarantee that uh, we will not be ambitious in the public life if we are good in the uh, private life that's also for sure but you see we need to maintain our wakaguti means if somebody has no control over his speech then there would be no control on his uh, uh, ambitions on his uh, uh, talks on his uh, uh, on his uh, steps that the, that the person takes in his or her life and the conduct of his life so wakaguti is the primary thing controlling one strong it starts from here the control starts from here and if there is control then there would be good deeds because good deeds are the results of our control only because of the control we can think about issues and we can think about our wrong conducts and the right conducts so it starts from there so if somebody is uh, talking just nonsense and especially in the public life in the political life then this will bring devastation to the nation that's for sure and we have seen many many examples in the recent uh, times that uh, wakaguti is nowhere there political leaders are making all kinds of uh, nonsensical statements all kinds of and devastating statements they are dividing the uh, public uh, for their uh, political gains and all and you see the real problem is that they have taken all these uh, clouds of being sannyasi fakirs uh, uh, and the uh, uh, most saints yogis and, and all these you see what is the meaning of these uh, words their meaning is that the person is nowhere near to the greed of authority greed of power and he has uh, left a uh, family social life and nowhere nowhere he is near to any kind of uh, uh, social greed or the political greed but you see they are totally for the political greeds there and they have taken all these clouds of uh, these uh, saints uh, uh, and, and all these uh, the, that, that are the, the words that i told you so nowhere you can call them saints they are all about the political existence there and they can do anything for that gain they can say anything for that gain so where we, we, we know where we see this wakaguti aspect and the jana sukham and the janahita aspect because jana sukham and janahita these are the results of these controls these are the results of these ethical conducts but we can we can never see these things in their conduct so it is about the political morality a commitment to justice and the impartiality so these are the results of these primary things okay and they actually character uh, these are the characteristic things for our uh, a political responsible uh, conducts also so we are giving this responsibility to these leaders because they are very strong in these aspects we are believing uh, such but when the people their interpersonal morality their uh, collective uh, conscious issue their intellectual uh, aspects they become weaker and they are nowhere uh, understand the meaning of education they know they, they do not understand the meaning of dharma they, they do not understand the meaning of values and they do not understand the meanings of uh, uh, proper conduct ethics they do not understand then they will choose those kind of leaders they are uh, who are only cheating them who are only making false statements and they are talking about symbolism they are not talking about the values they will talk about the gods uh, statues they are mandirs masjids but they will not talk about their values so this is the hypocrisy the writer is talking about and you see uh, this how this hypocrisy impacts the political uh, scene that is uh, totally apparent today family civil society and state german philosopher friedrich hegel he also made similar statements he said that uh, there are categories family civil society and and the state the family there uh, there is it's a small smallest community people are uh, uh, just connected to each other they are emotionally connected love and hate these these things matter the most and when it comes to the civil society there these things will not be uh, mattering there and market society we can call it because there are conflict of interests and collective conscience is needed there responsibility is needed there for the people and we when we come to the political community then love and hate these are not the things we should look for we should look for the public reason that if somebody is a, a publicly responsible he is a publicly moralistic then that thing would matter it would not matter that person how uh, that person is in his personal life maybe he is a saint in his personal life but it is not a guarantee that in the public life he would be remaining the saint there and uh, 
uh, he would not uh, want any power authority or something like that because there are many many examples that people are uh, behaving like saints and they are not demanding anything and they are not having any family and they are uh, living alone there there are many many examples but their public conduct is very very drastic and drastically different if you talk about hitler then uh, he did not have uh, any family and uh, a, a single person was there but he was not attached uh, to her that much so his public life was devastating for the public and here many examples we can see powerful politicians must show greater care and sensitivity to the appropriate use of force and violence because uh, they wield authority and uh, the use of these things against public or for the public that needs a lot of judgment a lot of ethical conduct if the conduct is not ethical and if you want to concentrate the power and if you want to become arbitrary in a sense then you will always misuse of uh, misuse this power so that's the thing that is needed so ethical conduct is at the core of it okay and uh, public reason concludes everything it it uh, covers everything if the person starts thinking that he begins to believe that he alone possesses the truth ki uh, that person only knows the truth and he knows what is good for the society what is not and for the entire community he knows the truth and for the entire community he knows what is good and what is bad then there is a huge problem with that leader and we must recognize that and that person would make these kind of statements always that uh, he is the supreme uh, lord of lord there and he know what is good what is bad people are appreciating him people are following him and he will always say me me and me and uh, he will take his name again and again so these kind of psychological characteristics are very much visible for that leader so that's the problem and that undermines the justice and the public reason for the uh, for the worst uh, results so that is the issue and it starts from our conscience it starts from our intellectual ability that we always recognize this if we appreciate these things then we will be able to conduct ethically in our life then we will be able to recognize those people who they are whose conducts are upright otherwise if that person is not publicly responsible and if his public public morality aspect is not strong then we should not elect those leaders that is the ultimate message here otherwise they would bring devastation next reductive pricing this issue is regarding the rafael issue here reductive means if some clause is removed for a reason from a particular document then that would be called reductive so here reductive pricing in the rafael uh, issue and all these documents and the report that was given to the supreme court by cag where some important pricing clauses were removed because the argument given given that it was the national security issue that we cannot tell about the pricing issues so that was a bizarre thing here uh, writer says that cag is a constitutional body article 148 to 151 is there uh, with the cag's body and uh, rajiv maharshi is the current cag and you see cag is the friend and philosopher of the public account committee which actually examines the report of the cag which are uh, there in the parliament uh, put by president and these reports are given from the cag to the president and president puts them into the house parliamentary house so public account committee is headed by leader of opposition so directly connected with the psc and here psc uh, strongly uh, complained about this issue that uh, supreme in the supreme court cag said that we have submitted the report but we have never seen any kind of report in the public accounts committee and in which parallel universe you put those reports and here now cag says that some reductive pricing clauses were there and Mis ministry uh, insisted for this thing that these issues cannot be revealed and by any chance by any uh, application or by any demand these things cannot be revealed this is under the ultimate immunity of the national security clause so that is why this reductive pricing issue was, was there but the writer says cag is mandated to audit all receipts and expenditures of, of, of the three tier governments whether it's center state or uh, other governments so here the center government is involved and it is about the pricing issue and it is it is the public money it is not the money of uh, any uh, private institution or uh, some person so the auditing is must and CAG is all there for this auditing, this accounts auditing and it submits the reports to the uh, legislature and ultimately to the PSE and that uh, examines that report 
but here things are missing and the most crucial things out of, of the pricing is missing that means what is the meaning of the CAC? What is the meaning of the CAC's report if the pricing issues are not there? So what CAC is observing there? These uh, equipments and national, national security issues, uh, CAC is not uh, able to understand there. They can only understand the, uh, understand the accounts there and these things are, are not given in the report. So here at least Supreme Court must know about these things because some people know about these issues maybe there are national security issues but government knows about that and the ministry and all they know about these issues so the supreme court is also a very responsible one so that should know about these issues and cag is also a constitutional body so why uh, you are not giving this uh, information there and here it says that pricing is the most important thing these technical aspects what kind of servicing would be there everything would be revealed by the pricing only and what is the issue of national security in the pricing cag stated that reductive pricing was unprecedented it accepted that it is unprecedented it has never done uh, never been done before it is happening for the first time that these arguments are given but ministry insistence citing security reason what the thing was the thing that uh, we did not uh, uh, reveal this information to the public or the or to the court so this report suppresses more than it reveals that's the issue and uh, in the parliamentary committee uh, the government said that the media or the other any stakeholders or any any other committee or the CACS report cannot ob obtain complete accurate and reliable information due to reductive pricing or the national security clause so that's a bizarre thing writer is talking about and he says that institution is constitutionally mandated and empowered to do so its duty is covering all essential factors about the procurement, customized end-to-end -end pricing assessments, legal requirements, escrow accounting. Escrow accounting means when two parties are involved and they cannot trust 100% on each other. Then there would be a third party account and the money would be deposited in that account and after the deal is signed, after the deal is done and they feel that uh, it's a trustable deal, then the money would be transferred from that third party account to the uh, second party. So this is the escrow account. So the issues of escrow accounting, terms and condition, arbitration clause, all these things should be there with the authorities of CAG and the Supreme Court so that they can uh, scrutinize everything. And you see, Supreme Court must know about all these details. And Supreme Court is the only ultimate authority that can scrutinize this matter in, the, uh, in a uh, manner where public uh, uh, reason and the public uh, accountability and the responsibility issues they can be upheld so supreme court must know about all these details and these things are not being given here so that's the uh, very negative image and very negative consequence that it may bring here okay maybe cag's office lacks expertise to conduct a performance audit maybe some experts are not there security experts are not there or maybe some uh, specific uh, expertise is needed there but these people can be arranged they can be sought from the pool of resources or the credible organizations there are many many officials there are many many expertise so in the past also this help is uh, taken here but why this uh, complete immunity is being given to this uh, pricing uh, clause and all these issues and really uh, this uh, procurement activity was executed keeping in mind economy efficiency and effectiveness and ethics and equity that should have been done on these uh, aspects and the biggest issue is of the ethics because any kind of uh, uh, system you can create there but people would be involved in that and the ethical conduct would be the most important thing otherwise loopholes can be there anywhere so it is the issue of ethics and when it is the issue of public ethics or the political ethics then it is the most important thing for the democracy so this is all for today these are the questions and uh, please look for their answers and put their uh, answers in the comment section and look for the additional data these are extremely important thing for the thing for the prelims examination and they, this will help you a lot the pdf you will get here with this uh, facebook group thanks a lot keep watching to submit